Hey, it's Patrick from Frontly. I'm excited to announce a few features that just went live in the app. If you're in the app right now, you'll probably need to refresh the page in order to get access to these new features. So don't forget to do that. And without further ado, I'm gonna talk about some of the things we just put live. So I'm gonna go right into a page and I'm gonna show you a row of buttons that I've created. Pretty simple, they are just a few colorful buttons. Now, if, uh, if I wanted to use this throughout my app, maybe in more than one place, I can actually go and duplicate this. So we've been able to duplicate individual blocks for a long time, but today we released multiple features around this. One, you can now duplicate rows and columns, which duplicates all of the blocks within that row all the way down in the hierarchy or column and that includes the actions. So it duplicates them, they're new actions, so you should be able to duplicate them and, and edit them separately. And so here's an example of this, this simple button row. So all I have to do is go to the more section and you can see I have this duplicate block. So when I click on that, a brand new copy has been created of all of these blocks. Now, what's probably even cooler is that we also have a new feature called save as custom block. Now this is really powerful because not only can you duplicate a row and all the content uh, inside of it on a specific page, but you can actually save it and use it on other pages in your app. That's right. This is a big deal because now you can almost create your own little library of, of components that you can use across your pages. I know there are users out there that this is probably going to save hours of time for so I'm really excited to be able to release this today. So let me show you how simple it is. All I have to do is click save as custom block and I'm prompted to give it a name and a description. So um, I'm going to call this button row and the description will just be uh, a simple row of colorful buttons. Now I'm going to hit save that's all we that's all we have here and uh, I just keep going on with my day now if I go just to show you I'll create a brand new page and it's totally blank all I have to do is click on the more open this blocks browser and you can see oh let maybe let me refresh the page here just to make sure that it's it's been loaded in awesome okay so I can either go right to my custom tab which is a new tab that's appeared or if I am in the all tab, um, I can see it down here. It's also searchable as well. So if I search a button, um, my custom should show up here. And so yeah, if I just click on that, you can see I had the name and description. I can inject this into any page. So very, very powerful. Um, should save you lots of time, especially if you want to tweak something. Um, now, one thing that's really important to understand. So if I this isn't a reusable component that if I edit one instance of it, it will edit all across the app. This is still like, imagine you're, you're duplicating it and now they're totally separate. So if you wanted to go back and, and, and edit your saved block, then what you would actually do is you would create an instance of it on this page. So let's say I wanted two different versions or I want to make a new version. Maybe I want one where the buttons are in a different order or something like that. So let, let me change that. Now it starts with button four. So all I would do is I would go and I would hit save as custom block again um, and just, you know, whatever, give it a new name and then hit save. Now I'll refresh the page again. <clears throat> so I now have my old button row and I have my new row. So there isn't a way to edit an existing custom block, but what you can do is you can create a copy change it and then save a new copy. So it's not gonna affect any of the existing instances that you've already added to pages from your saved ones, but very powerful, hopefully saves you some time. Now, one thing that I wanna show you as well is that we have this new page blocks section, which actually shows the visual hierarchy of your page, which is really, really important when working with rows and columns. This kind of changes the game for being able to keep track because even if you just look at this here, right? I have two rows, I have a bunch of uh, buttons inside them. It's already a little bit crazy. Now, imagine if I wanted to add this whole second row inside the first row. So this is already, you know, an option. 
what I, I just go add that existing one. So now they're all together. But if I go back to my uh, page blocks, you can see, you know, this is visualized. So I can tell that I have one row and I have some buttons. Uh, for some reason, this one button is inside a column. That's great because honestly, you actually can't see that. But I guess now that I know that, I could I could deal with that, right? I could go and I could click on this specific block and I can delete it or edit it or whatever. So that's something, um, that's the only functionality right now. You can just visualize and you can click on a block and jump right to it. So it becomes the active block. Uh, one thing we're definitely looking into is how to make it possible for you to, I guess, drag and drop these different uh, pieces here into maybe different areas. So maybe you want to reorder them here or ideally drag things sort of in and out of rows and layouts and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty complicated. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on that, but because of the hierarchy, it's it'll probably take some time to find the right way to implement that. But um, we're really excited about that. And so last but not least of our features uh, announced today would be a new, a new setting that is uh, some custom CSS options. Now, this isn't a full-blown cross the app CSS. Um, the thing about Frontly, so just for anyone who doesn't know what CSS is, it's uh, cascading style sheets. It's just, uh, it's like a developer uh, thing and it's a way of, of creating more advanced customized styles for your app. So. It's not really necessary for the basics, but uh, a lot of users have requested this, so I've decided to start adding it. And you can see it's it's pretty simple. If you are uh, a developer, you can you can get in here pretty quickly. And <clears throat> so if I click on a block and I go to the bottom of the styles, click on Edit CSS, you'll see that certain aspects of these blocks have been essentially enabled um, to be edited with CSS. So because of the way Frontly works, we can't just blanket allow CSS for everything. That's just not how it works uh, at all because it's a generative app builder. There's just so many things that are different about how Frontly renders its app compared to a traditional web app. So <clears throat> in order for us to be able to enable this, we have to individually expose the, the aspects to be able to be edited with CSS. And so in this case, the block container, which is for most blocks, the table, grid, basically anything with this white card around it, um, that will be editable um, for the most part. So let's say uh, I just want to change the border radius. You can already do this in the settings, I think, but uh, you can see in real time, we've, we've got to change here. If I want to do something really obvious and um, horrible, I can go border, you know, five pixels, solid, red, or dashed. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it kind of applies in real time. So be careful what you apply in here because uh, CSS is really powerful. One thing that is kind of cool is you can do uh, hover states. So let's say I wanted to add a hover and I could say background blue. And also please, this <laughs> is don't do this. It's, it's just so horrible, but you can you can see for a second that uh, you know there there's some interesting possibilities here. So be careful with what you style. And right now, only certain things are stylable. So buttons can be accessed with CSS. Um, this can access the button container that includes the text. So you can say font size, um, you know, 50 pixels, <laughs> padding, uh, 30 pixels. You know, you can you can do a fair bit with this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, and you can add a hover state to your button as well, which is pretty cool. So anyway, those are the uh, those are the updates for today. Uh, most importantly, I think the ability to save your own custom blocks and be able to reuse them across your pages. Um, that's great. We're, we're even thinking about if it's possible to allow that to be used across multiple apps. There are just some other things to consider there because the same spreadsheets and, and stuff like that won't necessarily be in the in the same app. So there's some complication there uh, for the actions and stuff. But anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's our update for, for today. Thanks for watching. And I'll probably be maybe releasing some more detailed documentation about this stuff pretty soon. But uh, please let us know if you notice any issues. This stuff is brand new. So probably there are going to be some issues. Anyway, thanks for watching.